Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of college algebra and trigonometry. All material has an assumed prerequisite of both Algebra 1, which is elementary algebra, and Algebra 2, which is intermediate algebra. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. In this video, we're going to use the sum and difference identities from trigonometry to evaluate trig functions at non-special angles. It is assumed that you know the sum and difference identities. If you don't, you should have them written down somewhere. We actually just proved them in the previous video, so here they are, and the proof is down below there. So now we're gonna go ahead and use them. And we're gonna use them to evaluate trig functions uh, without using calculators. Now, to be honest with you, there's not a lot of angles you can do this for, but it surprisingly uh, um, still gives you quite a few angles that you can um, evaluate using the fact that you know the special angles. So. Finding the exact value of a cosine of 105 degrees. Well, 105 degrees, that's definitely not a special angle. But once I know that somebody hands me something in degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and write down my special angles. Now, these are the base special angles that we have, but you know that you can actually work with any angle that has a reference angle of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, or 60 degrees, or you can actually work with 90 degree angles as well. So in this case, I could also, for example, work with, uh, let's say 150 degrees or 135 degrees, or I could work with 120 degrees. Those are all special or related to special angles. Their reference angles are special angles. So using combinations of any of these, can you add or subtract to get to 105 degrees? The answer to that is, yeah, of course I can. I could take, for example, 45 plus 60. That's one way to get there. I could also, by the way, use 150 degrees minus 45 degrees. That's another way to get there. In fact, there are quite a few other ways we can get there, but I like using smaller angles if I can, because that allows me to use my special triangles. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna rewrite that cosine of 105 degrees in terms of smaller, easier angles. So cosine of 105 degrees is the same thing as the cosine of 45 degrees plus 60 degrees. It doesn't matter which order you write that in because the summation's the same. Addition is commutative and we're gonna go ahead and recall the sum of angles formula for the cosine. Hopping over, you can see up above, right here, the sum of angles formula for the cosine. Cosine of an angle plus another angle is the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus that's very important. The cosine does not like its S-I-G-N sign. Cosine doesn't like its sign. The sine, on the other hand, does. If there was a plus there, there'd be a plus here. So sine likes its sign, cosine does not. So anyway, cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. All we need to do is insert the angles that we're working with. So going back to here, this will turn into the cosine of the first angle, 45 degrees, times the cosine of the second angle, 60 degrees, and then minus, because that was a plus, it's the opposite sign, sine of 45 degrees, sine of 60 degrees. So note here that it is very much assumed that you're incredibly comfortable at this point with working with angles, the special angles and trig functions. So you shouldn't really need 
the triangles at this point, but I'll go ahead and just write them down if this is your first time watching my videos so you can see how I do my mathematics in the background. So my special triangles are this 45, 45, 90. The ratios are one, one, and root two. And then we have a 30, 60, 90. These are the basis of all trigonometry for our handiwork. 30, 60, 90, one, two, root three. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, one over root two, times. The cosine of 60, again, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's one over two, minus the sine of 45, that's opposite over hypotenuse, one, oh, sorry, <laughs> I pointed at an angle. Opposite, which is one over root two, so one over root two. And then, uh, that's supposed to be one over root two, just didn't quite work out for me. And then sine of 60 degrees, again, opposite over hypotenuse, root three over two, root three over two. And now I'll go ahead, since they have the same denominator, they both have a denominator of two root two, I could go ahead and combine the numerators. That'd be one minus square root of three. That is the exact value of the cosine of 105 degrees. Not memorizable, but there you have it. Now again, I should mention here, some people have instructors that will force them to rationalize denominators. I am not one of those instructors when your denominator is just a simple single uh, term, which this is a single term. There's no need to rationalize that denominator. In fact, if you did, it would just get uglier. So there's no point in doing it here. All right, so that's how you figure out the trig function of a non-special angle, if it can be written in terms of special angles. And that's a big if. It can be somewhat challenging to find those angles. And where it's most challenging is when you're dealing with radian measure. Radian measure, it's always a pain to work with when you're trying to figure out, well, what is the trig function of a non-special looking angle? So we have 17 pi over 12 as our radian angle, which is not a special angle. But let's go ahead and write down our special angles. They're pi over six, pi over four, and pi over three. Now, what I tend to do is I look at these denominators, denominators being, and let me grab a right, the correct color highlighter, six, four, and three. And I would ask myself, of those denominators, which would divide into 12? Well, they all divide into 12. That makes it even worse. So really what you're gonna do is try to find combinations of these fractions that will add to 17 pi over 12. Now, personally, as a good piece of advice here, I find that it's much better when you're working in radians here to take a look at the angle itself and try to decompose it. In other words, try to figure out how to write it as some number pi over 12 plus a different number pi over 12, where those numbers, a pi over 12 and b pi over 12, will reduce down. So for example, I would like the coefficient, or sorry, the numerator of the first fraction here, that a, I would like it to cancel into 12 somehow. So think of two numbers that add to 17 Let's see, uh, two numbers that add to 17. Well, one and 16. Well, one and one twelfth or one pi over 12 is not a special angle. So I'll give up on that. And then I think, well, two and 15. Well, two twelfths is pi over, two pi over 12 is pi over six. That's actually a special angle. 15 pi over 12, if you reduce it down, reduces down to five pi over four. Four, and that is actually a special angle. So that's how I would probably do this. Two pi over 12 plus 15 pi over 12. The question is, is that the only combo? No, there's a bunch of other combos you could do. So I'm gonna circle this as the one we're working with, but you could try three pi over 12. Let's see, we're getting the 17 plus 14 pi over 12. That would be three pi over 12 is pi over four, special angle. And 14 pi over 12 reduced down to seven pi over six. Again, something I can work with. So this would work as well. Uh, you move forward, let's see, four and 13 will work out. Well, that will not work out. 
because uh, while 4 pi over 12 definitely is nice because it's pi over 3, 13 pi over 12 is nowhere near a special angle for us. So you see the idea here. All I'm doing is just splitting it into a sum of two fractions and deciding eh, which one would I like to split it into. Really, I would just stop at the first one. So tangent of 17 pi over 12 is the same thing as the tangent of 2 pi over 12 plus 15 pi over 12. And we know how that reduces. That's going to be the tangent of pi over 6, special angle, plus uh, divide top and bottom by 3, and you'll get 5 pi over 4. Again, that has a reference angle uh, that is special. And now I just need to figure out what is the tangent of the sum of two angles. And that's the one where I told you should not really bother memorizing. It doesn't come up enough. I included it as an example, but in reality, it just doesn't come up enough to really memorize. But the tangent of the sum of two angles, alpha plus beta, is equal to the tangent of the first angle plus the tangent of the second divided by one minus the tangent of the first angle times the tangent of the second. So again, this is going to be the tangent of the first angle plus the tangent of the second divided by one minus the opposite sign of that plus, basically one minus the tangent of the first angle times the tangent of the second angle. And now all I need to do is figure out what those tangents of those angles are. And I have to actually consider quadrants. And I've had some students in office hours recently. If you're not one of my students, then you can almost ignore what I'm about to say. But I've had students in office hours recently who are really having a hard time with large angle measure. So let me just reiterate what you would do here. I would reduce these large angles down to their reference angles and consider what quadrants they're in. Remember, trig is all about reference angles and quadrants. Well, the quadrant for both of these angles, five pi over four, if you were to draw it out off to the side here, here's four pi over four. So we're just into quadrant three at five pi over four. And we have a reference angle of pi over four. So the tangent of five pi over four is very similar to the tangent of regular old pi over four. We just have to remember that tangent is positive in quadrant three. So I will trade out these black ink tangents here for positive blue ink tangents of pi over four. Okay, so I'll do that right now. Uh, I, this is equal to the tangent of pi over six. I'm just going to keep this like this for now. And then remember, it's going to be plus tangent of pi over four. The sign actually does not change because in quadrant three, tangent's positive. We had a quadrant three angle, so that's why. Downstairs, we have one minus the tangent of pi over six. And again, times a positive tangent of pi over four. There we go. Now I can actually work with my triangles and I can do my right triangle trigonometry. So I draw out my pi over four, pi over four, right angle. That's one, one root two. And I'll draw out my pi over six, pi over three, right triangle. And those ratios are one, two and a root three. So the tangent of pi over six, tangents opposite, over adjacent, that's one over root three, plus tangent of pi over four, that's opposite over adjacent, so that's one over one, divided by one minus, well, the tangent of pi over six, we've already said is one over root three, times tangent of pi over four is one. I will then multiply both numerator and denominator of this compound fraction by a square root of three, just to get rid of all those compound fractions within there. And this would give me one plus root three, all divided by root three minus one. And one other thing you could do here. So I have 
kind of barked about this for a while that I don't force my students to rationalize denominators if there's a single term in the denominator, but there's actually two terms in this denominator, two terms. And because of that, I am going to rationalize the denominator here uh, because it just makes it nicer. So you're going to rationalize this denominator by multiplying both numerator and denominator by its conjugate, root three plus one, root three plus one. And when you do that in the numerator, you'll get root three plus one plus three plus root three all over. In the denominator, you'll get three plus root three minus root three and then minus one. And that is actually beautiful because we get in the numerator four plus two root three. And in the denominator, we get three minus one, which is two. And that simplifies down to two plus root three. And that would be the tangent of whatever we had, 17 pi over 12. It looks like a lot of work, but I really took my time with it. But notice the level of expertise in trigonometry that you have to be at when you move forward in trig. It's not like you can have a superficial knowledge of trig and pass trig. You have to really know what you're doing. By the time you get through a trig course, there should be no question in your mind about sines, cosines, tangents, secants, cosecants, cotangents of special angles, what reference angles are, how important quadrants are, all that stuff is so, 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 so very important. So I highly recommend if you have, if you struggle with that, review my videos on reference angles, on right triangle trigonometry. Uh, go back through it and watch all that stuff if you have to. But this is it for this video. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close, don't talk too much, that isn't cold. Sure, you may really hurt inside, it doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.